The first set of changes relates to outdoor social interactions. Uh, we realise that meeting up, even outdoors, even in Scotland, uh, can be hugely beneficial for our wellbeing. So from Friday, we intend to relax the law so that up to four adults from up to two households will be able to meet outdoors. And in addition, we will make clear in the guidance that this will allow for social and recreational purposes as well as essential exercise. Meeting will be possible in any outdoor space, including private gardens, but please do stick to the new rules. Gatherings must be a maximum of four people from two households, and you should only go indoors if that is essential in order to reach a back garden or to use a toilet. And for now, please stay as close to home as possible. We hope to be in a position to relax, at least to some extent, travel restrictions within Scotland in the weeks ahead, but our advice is that it would not be safe to do so quite yet. For young people aged 12 to 17, we want to be even more flexible to enable more interaction with friends. So for 12 to 17 year olds, outdoor meetings will also be limited to a maximum of four people, but the two household limit won't apply. That means four friends from four different families will be able to get together outdoors, and this will hopefully allow young people to see more of their friends than is currently the case. We're also proposing some changes to the rules on outdoor exercise and activities. From Friday, outdoor non-contact sports and organised group exercise will be permitted for all adults in groups of up to 15 people. We will also ensure that there is some flexibility around the travel rules for young people so that children are not prevented from taking part in sport if, for example, they belong to a club that is a bit outside their own local authority area. Now, these are minor changes, I know that, but I do think they are important changes. They have also been made possible by the hard sacrifices the majority of people across the country have made, and we will seek to build on them as quickly as possible in the weeks ahead. The other careful change that we feel able to make at this stage relates to places of worship. I can confirm that, assuming no deterioration in the situation with the virus between now and then, we intend to allow communal worship to restart from Friday 26 March. This is in time for Passover, Easter, Ramadan and Visaki. In addition, the limit on attendance at communal services will be increased from 20, which was the limit in place before lockdown, to 50, assuming, of course, that a place of worship is spacious enough to accommodate that many people with two-metre physical distancing. Now, I know that the restrictions on communal worship have been really difficult for many people, despite the exceptional, quite exceptional efforts made by faith groups to reach out to their communities. This change, again, is relatively minor. It is proportionate and we believe that it can be achieved relatively safely, um, but it will hopefully enable more people to draw strength, comfort and inspiration from acts of collective worship. Presiding officer, all of us, I think, can see that things are getting better just now. In recent weeks, we have seen a significant fall in new cases. Deaths and hospital admissions are thankfully now falling. And the vaccination programme is not just progressing well, it is progressing beyond our initial expectations. All of this is excellent news and it provides really strong grounds for hope. But that hope must also be balanced by caution. Because we have been in lockdown, it's easy to overlook the fact that the virus we are dealing with now is much more infectious than the one we were dealing with in the autumn. But we will be reminded of that very quickly if we try to do too much too soon. And since we are prioritising the reopening of schools, our scope for lifting other restrictions, certainly in the next few weeks, is extremely limited. That's why the changes I have set out today are modest, but they are also important. They will, I hope, help people's health and well-being by enabling group exercise and allowing for a bit more social interaction. And they will also, I hope, let children see more of their friends and exercise and play a bit more normally. And they should, I hope, provide some comfort for faith groups. I expect that further, more substantial changes will be possible in the weeks ahead, and I will set out as much detail as I can about that in next week's statement. And of course, as I've said before, if the data allows us to relax more restrictions more quickly than we have previously indicated, we will not hesitate to do that.